Hi, Data Ben here. Today we're going to look at scraping websites using VBA. So scraping a website means obtaining the data from the web page and importing it to VBA using VBA automatically into Excel. So we're going to use this website here as an example, which is boldtuesday.com, which has a list of all countries and capitals in the world, all spread into different tables. So A, B, C, for example, and with the country on the left hand side and the capital on the right hand side. So what we want to be able to do here is search for any country. So let's say Italy, click the update button. And after some time looking through these tables, it will actually bring back the result and highlight the result that we want here. So this VBA code has successfully done this here. And then if I look for a different country, it will come up with that result as well. Let's see how we do this in VBA. So we have three input parameters here. First, the URL in cell B2, the country we're searching for in cell B3, and then the output cell, so where we want the results to start appearing from. In this case, we're gonna keep this in cell E1. Let's jump into the VBA by clicking, uh, right-clicking on the command button, assign macro, and uh, we're going to edit the VBA that we've set up here. If you need to create a command button, you can go into the developer tab and then draw a button and attach it to a macro or record a new macro. But in our case, we're going to right click, assign macro and uh, edit the VBA. Okay, so we're going to use an object called a query table, which is how we're gonna to connect to an external website. So first of all, this is the uh, subroutine, import countries and capitals and then we've set all the parameters that we're going to need for this code. Then we've set our initial parameters, so uh, what the values are we've picked up from the worksheet, and we're actually going to start to step through this code line by line, so F8 on PC and Command-Shift-I on Mac. Okay, we're going to step through line by line on this code, so F8 or Command-Shift-I, and then the first uh, initial parameters we're just setting and collecting from the worksheet. So the URL, which we actually need to preface with a URL semicolon before we get the URL that we've entered. Uh, this is because the query table object that we're going to use requires a URL semicolon uh, first in, in its um, initialization. Then we're going to get the starting letter. So we're actually searching for Italy. So the starting letter is I. And we're using the locals window to see what these parameters contain as we go along. And then the country is Italy. So that's what we're searching for. And then the destination cell we've set as E1. And then we're going to set the active worksheet as a worksheet object because we want to be able to do manipulations of data on this worksheet. So I'm just gonna scroll down here and then move on to the next block of code. Now we want to delete any existing query tables that may exist, so from a previous search, for example. So we're saying if the, if the worksheet query tables count is greater than zero, then we're going to loop through and delete every single uh, query table that exists in the worksheet. Now this should only happen once because we have one previous result. So first the query table, result range dot delete, is, so that's deleted. Uh, so the range itself is deleted. As you see, it's disappeared on the worksheet. And then the query table itself is deleted. And there's only one, so that's only looped once, but you may have many query tables on some worksheets. So it's worth looping through just to check that you're catching them all and deleting them all. Next, we're going to set the new query table by using set query table equals worksheets dot query tables dot add. And this requires two parameters. The first is the URL, which we've already set up before. So this is the, uh, uh, the URL here. And if you remember, it has the URL semicolon followed by the URL, and then the destination, so where the results are going to go to. So we're saying range, destination cell, 
which is cell E1, set on the parameters earlier above. Now we're going to move on to the next line. Next, we've created a loop in this block. So we've gone from 1 to 26 here, because there's 26 letters of the alphabet. And uh, we want to loop through all 26 tables on the website. There's actually fewer than 26, because uh, there aren't any countries beginning with X, for example. But uh, for completion's sake, we've just said from 1 to 26. And then we're using the with uh, command, so with query table, because we're going to do lots on here. We've said to, first we've set to refresh on file open as true. Uh, we've actually blanked out refresh period here, but I'm just going to show it. So refresh period, this would be one minute, would mean that every minute the query table would refresh automatically by itself. But we don't need that, and I just wanted to show you that command. And then we've got a name for the query table. And the next one, web formatting, is the type of web formatting that uh, the query table can have. So if I have a look here, we've got three options. Web formatting all, which brings in everything, including links. Web formatting none, which is plain text. And uh, web formatting RTF, which is the rich text format. And usually we get the best results with the rich text format. So let's just move the code up to this section. And now we're going to look at web selection type. And the options we have for here are Excel all tables. So it would bring in all 20, well, approximately 26 tables from this website at once. Excel entire page. So it would bring in the entire website, which we definitely don't want. And then finally, Excel specified tables. And as we're looping through each table one by one and interrogating it, we want the Excel specified tables. So this loop is going to go through every single table from A to Z, and it's going to uh, scan it for the country that we want to return. And this is where, where we do the scan or we set the table. So we've set the web tables to, to X. So it's currently table one, which is going to be A. And then we're going to refresh the query. We do an on error resume next here because on error resume next means continue even if there is no table. So if we're missing X, for example, so say we have Zambia and it gets to X and there might be no table for X, it would crash and if we didn't have an on error resume next. And then we set it back to normal with on error go to zero. Next, we do a check to see whether the top left cell in the resulting table is the same as the starting letter. So this will be A at the moment because we're on X equals one, so table one. And if we actually go back to the Excel, you can see we are on A, it's actually brought in the data. And so that is not going to match. So uh, it will move on and move to the next X, which will be B. And this will continue all the way until it finds a result, at which point it will set found to true. So found as a Boolean, true or false, and it will exit the for loop. So let's press play and see how far this gets. And it's taking a minute just as we goes through all of the tables. And it's actually hit this code now. And if we go to back to Excel, we can see it's hit I and it's recognized that it's had a, a found a match and now it's going to exit the for loop. Next, we're going to check if found equals false. And found may stay as false if the country you're searching for doesn't exist. So if this happens, what, what it'll do is it would delete the query table and delete the results, delete the query table, and then come up with a message box saying no country found. But we'll demonstrate this shortly. Finally, we uh, jump to a, another subroutine, which simply is going to format this data so it looks a little, bit, a little bit better on the screen. So I'm not going to go through this section here, but essentially it takes the range, qt.result range, and it takes the, uh, the country, and it highlights and formats the whole table, or the whole range, and then it finds the matching option that we have and it highlights it yellow. So if I press play to finish the subroutine, 
that's the end of the code and what it did was it added borders and uh, added a background color here and also highlighted the correct option that we had here so that's what happens when a result is successfully found but if we put in something uh, that doesn't make sense for the country and click update it will actually search through all 26 tables on this website but when it gets to the end of this search it will come up with a message box as it has done now and simply says no country found so you can test uh, if that doesn't work and you'll see there's no results at all um, but then you can go back to uh, test if it works when you put in a correct result and it should come up which it does there correctly with the result here for Italy so that's the full VBA code and uh, that's an example of scraping data from a website so an advantage of web scraping in this way using the query table object is you can obtain table details quite easily but a disadvantage is it can be a little slow if you're looping through lots of tables or it can be difficult to find the data you want if you bring in the entire website for example but if you're patient and careful with building your code you can really obtain just about uh, any data from uh, a website that you want there are other methods to scraping data from the internet which we'll cover in other videos